Suspense Ollie. Welcome to Suspense She Shed Sunday, where I have true crime in my she shed every Wednesday and Sunday. I know, today's not Sunday is what you're thinking. Well, the reason I'm doing one early is because a new serial killer has been identified, and I just wanted to make sure and get the information out to you guys quickly. It's early, and I hope you don't mind. And I won't even tell you a rhyme. Well, I sort of got you there. I told a little short one. Sort of. <laughs> a new serial killer has just been identified. And this case made me so mad when I learned the details. You'll see why. The man they identified as a serial killer's name is John Charles Bullsinger. And he has killed a string of women in the 80s. Unfortunately, he will never have to pay for the crimes because he committed suicide in 1988 at age 31. And listen to this. This is the part. He could have been stopped after the first known murder. But he ended up only serving five years, guys, for a murder because our system let him off in five years the first murder was casey sorison on march 29 1980 33 year old casey of utah was found dead by her boyfriend mark anger he returned home to his apartment after a 24-hour shift as a firefighter that's what my husband is when he went into his bedroom his girlfriend was lying spread eagle on his bed, all but her legs covered with the sheet. The cord of a clock radio resting on the bed was loosely tied around her neck. A catalog advertising sexual paraphernalia and entitled Romeo, your source of sexual pleasure, was nearby on the floor. The Joy of Sex and Super Sex, two books of explicit sexual literature, were in the nightstand by the bed. The living room seemed to indicate that a burglary, I cannot say that word for the life of me, burglary, bur someone had broken in and stole stuff, okay? <laughs> had taken place. <laughs> the contents of Casey's purse were scattered on the floor, a lamp was knocked over, and Mr. Anger's stereo was missing. Boy, but he is angry, wasn't he? Bad joke, sorry. After preliminary investigation, John was arrested and booked into the Salt Lake County Jail on April 1st, 1980, where he made a confession in the early morning hours of April the 2nd. According to the confession, Casey had last been seen alive on March 28, 1980 in Bill's Lounge in Magna, where she was a regular customer. She arrived there in a state of intoxication around 8 p.m. She sang along with a jukebox, danced by herself on the dance floor, and tried to kiss a lot of guys on the cheek up and down the bar. Obviously, she wasn't too faithful for, to her boyfriend. Yeah. She finally approached the 23-year-old John when he entered the bar around 9 p.m. Watched him play pool, but her put her arms around him between pool shots, even kissed him on the cheek. And then finally, they left together before 10 p.m. They left the bar. First, they went and picked up a bottle of whiskey, and then they headed to Mr. Anger's apartment. She literally took him to her boyfriend's apartment. I'm not judging. That's just kind of messed up, okay? They played records on the stereo, danced, and drank straight from the bottle for about an hour. Both were quite intoxicated. They went to the bedroom, partially undressed, laid down on the bed, eventually engaged in sexual behavior, right in Miss Stranger's bed. I guess right after they had sex for the first time, Casey said no. And she didn't want it to stop. She rolled over to pick up the clock radio, uh, set it down next to her. Neither of them comment, made a comment about the radio, he said. The couple resumed their sexual behavior, and he felt 
Casey moved and he opened his eyes then and saw the cord around her neck. They continued and the defendant opened his eyes again when he heard Casey say, pull. And he took hold of the cord and he began to pull. And as the sexual, as the sexual behavior was ending, trying to be wise with my words, not get too graphic and get kicked off YouTube, but as the sexual behavior was ending, then um, I guess he just pulled a little too tight, was what he said. And a few minutes later, he noticed that Casey's face looked strange, not awake or reacting. He became frayed, got up, picked up his clothes, went into the living room, dressed and walked back into the bedroom, where he seen Casey was still in the same position. Looked at her a few moments, then pulled a sheet over her, picked up his bottle, returned to the living room, dumped the contents of her purse. Yes, he's going to steal out of her purse. He's, and he also took Mr. Anger's stereo. But then later, John changed his story up. Then he stated that he grabbed the radio and he was the one that wrapped the cord around her neck. But it was after sex, he, sa he said because Casey got kind of weird-like, indignant, and that it just happened. Because she was indignant, it happened. That's the reason he decided to kill her. And listen to this. Like I said, he only got five years because they charged him with second-degree murder, not first-degree. He admitted that he, it was him. He did it, but he got second degree murder and ended up only serving five years. Five years. I imagine you'd get more than that if you killed a dog or something. Not that I encourage killing dogs. I love dogs. I have three amazing, wonderful, big dog person. So don't take that negative. If he had been given life, these other ladies would have never been murdered. He would have never killed again. After he got out of prison, three months later, only three months, he started killing again. Yes, he did. And on June 5th, 1986, at approximately 2.42 p.m., the police and fire medics were called to respond to apartment. This was in Oregon. And it was regarding deceased persons Gladys May Hensley, who was 62 years old. I guess someone had come into her apartment to do a welfare check and found her there. Because they hadn't seen her for several days, so they were going to check on her. It said that it was likely that she killed in the early hours on June the 4th. And she was strangled and sexually assaulted. But just two weeks later, 33-year-old Janice Dickinson was the next to be murdered. He didn't mess around. Prison didn't worry him again, I guess. Janice's body was found between the back of a car dealership and the highway. Um, her body was found, like, face up up against some trees, I guess, near the car dealership. And she was also partially nude. She was last seen alive in the summer of 1986, walking near Alton Baker Park. She had just been visiting with people and talked to people, and everything seemed fine, they said. The police thought maybe Janice had been by herself when someone likely grabbed her. The person they did, which we now know John, took her to the slope some kind of slope area like a hillside below Highway 126 and murdered her. It was out of the eye of where people could see. They couldn't see down this hillside. So he had a reason for taking her down there. An autopsy found Janice was stabbed, strangled, sexually assaulted, and beaten to death, just like Gladys. Uh, the investigators even interviewed all of Janice's friends and searched her home and car. And they knew that Janice and Gladys' deaths were probably linked, but they still didn't have a suspect. But both of them did have DNA on them. But back then, 
There's not a lot they can do with the DNA. And then, just a few months after Janice's murder, Bolsinger was actually arrested for burglary. We know now that is not why he broke into this house. He was probably going to murder this lady he broke into. So on September 26, 1986, officers were dispatched to the 300 block in South 51st place regarding a burglary in process. Upon arrival, officers heard the female screaming and learned the suspect had fled the residence. The female victim told officers she was at home and having trouble sleeping. She heard her dogs making strange noises in the kitchen, so she went to investigate. This is exactly why I have dogs. I have a huge German Shepherd and huge Labs, and I'm good with that. All of the interior lights were off. There was a light on inside at the rear sliding door. She saw a suspect peering through her kitchen window. Y'all, I'm in my she shed in the dark right now reading this. It's not the best thing to read when you're out here in the woods in the dark. And not only that, I have two huge windows right in front of me. So if I see eyes, I'm out of here, I'm running, I'm out. She saw the window slide open and then the suspect reached inside and removed a brace in the slider. She ran back to the living room and called 911. While on the phone, she saw the suspect walk into the living room. How scary would that be? He stood still for a moment and then approached her. She started screaming as the suspect tried to pull the phone from her hand. As she's calling 911. She started striking the suspect with a phone and a flashlight. What a brave girl. The suspect fled through the kitchen window. He left behind a down vest and a paring knife. John ran from the police, but he was captured by an officer with canines. Yay, dogs. The suspect claimed he knocked at the door three or four times and then walked away when he didn't get an answer. Really, why is the window busted open then, huh? He claimed to have memory loss when questioned further. Dude. Wow. But John was ultimately convicted. Guess what? Guess what? Can you even guess how much? He got out in a little over a year. Yes, he did. I told you this case makes you mad, mad, mad. Because it's horrible it sh that many, many women should not have died. Then, he attacked again. Geraldine Toohey, 73, was on the phone with her sister the night of February 27, 1988, when her phone went dead. I guess her sister just thought, well, you know, the phones are just messed up. So her sister didn't try to contact her again that night, but she went to pick her up for church the next day. Sweet little old lady that went to church. That makes me feel so bad. When she got to her house, her sister's body was sprawled on the living room floor, half naked. She had been stabbed, strangled, and sexually assaulted. If you guys see anybody in the window behind me, you'd better tell me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I don't know why this case is booking me out. I've read a billion cases. So basically, she was murdered in the same way the other women were. So they're thinking that the John knew she was home alone because he broke through her door. And he even cut the phone lines. That's why her phone went dead, y'all. Glad we have cell phones now. <laughs> that can happen. That's an amazing thing about cell phones. So they knew... Pretty much that all three murders were connected, but they never connected it to John. All of the murders were a result of a very violent strangulation, sharp force injury, and sexual assault. So this case set cold for years and years and years. And in 2016, that's when they first come out with the phenotype where they can actually tell your physical characteristics from... Um, you know, your DNA. So they were able to do that, and they actually had a sketch of what John might have looked like. And this is it. Don't, it don't look a whole lot like him. Maybe some, but that hair's crazy. I don't know what's up with that. But 
that I got a hundred tips, but nothing really came of it. There wasn't no really any good tips. So it said again a few more years until until it we came out with what we do now, which is catching so many. I mean, there is so many cold cases being solved. It is insane through this ancestry genealogy. And this is exactly how this one was solved as well. And so they were able to trace all of these women back to John. Unfortunately, John will never have to pay a price for hurting these women like this, which is totally sad for the victims and their family. One thing they do have is answers. They know who actually done the murder now. So maybe that will help bring a closure. I know that's not very much, but at least they got that, right? If you're a criminal now, you better watch out. And if you've done something in the past, you watch out because they're coming after you with this ancestry stuff. One relative of yours put something in that database, then you're going to be caught, bud. You guys, I'm glad y'all joined me today for this cold case. I'm glad I could bring it to you so quickly because, I mean, it's just brand new. And I just wanted to get the information out to you. If y'all want to keep up with all the cases, let me tell you stories about some cases on Sunday. And then I have Wacky World Wednesday, which I tell kind of crazy crimes, which I'm fixing to work on next. You guys just hit the like and subscribe. And I, I cover a wide range of things. And I can be your southern gal that can tell you true crime right from my she shit. All right, guys, I love y'all, and I thank you for listening. And I hope you have a blessed week. And y'all come back and see me, you hear? Bye.